It is often when you don't actually try to be right that you end up winning the argument. As counterintuitive as it may seem, but let me elaborate. So if you get into an argument with uh, specific types of people or whenever a topic is being mentioned in the conversation and you get into an argument because of that uh, source alone, it is probably that there is some repressed anger inside you linked with that topic specifically. And maybe I am not teaching you anything new here, but I would like to point your attention towards something important. When people constantly get into arguments uh, with everyone non-stop all the time, they may be qualified as what we call an injustice collector. I think it was referred to in the book by David Hawkins, uh, Letting Go. Uh, when people just get into new fights and new fights and new fights, in the end, it is not because the world around them doesn't like them, even if they may think it is. It is because there is something inside them repressed so strongly that they can't let go of, that their mind is trying to let go of it by experiencing some of the small relief by getting into an argument. So the first initial thing whenever you want to uh, solve problems in your life that have threat to people you uh, regularly argue with, it is about figuring out what in yourself is causing that anger or those feelings of being upset or maybe sometimes passive aggressive when you don't clearly say to tell somebody shut up but you have some behavior with them like huh, like sarcastic or there is something inside you that is not completely uh, healthy and not completely for the positive well-being of the person you are talking to when that is inside you what does that appeal to what does that appeal inside what is it a consequence of what happened that made you feel like that with that person or when this topic was being mentioned. The next step is to figure out, okay, when we talk about that argument, winning an argument or like solving a conflict, when we talk about that, who is the main person that comes to your mind? Or the main situation or conversation maybe that comes to your mind? I bet there must be one person you think about. When you think about arguing, who is the main person that you notice in your head? That you think about because you know that person, you can never make them understand they are so stubborn, stuck-minded, etc. And question yourself, what happened with that person or what happened with, the, with somebody who was similar to that person? Obviously, some woman who may get endlessly into a fight at work with a certain type of abusive boss, Maybe because the dad of that woman was abusive and now she is repeating the same um, situation unconsciously again and again. Same thing can happen with a guy who has been abused by an abusive mother. I have met many of them. And they just get into uh, new confrontations with women about stupid argument, really stupid shit that not even worth mentioning. But they just get into new fights and new fights because they are recreating unconsciously the same conflict again and again with somebody with whom it is not solved. And this would then go into a whole therapy session, uh, which is not a topic of this video. We may talk about that later if you want. But um, ne the next step then is, okay, if people were every time already agreeing with you, if people were constantly agreeing with you, what would be the main change that is wider, deeper, and more meaningful that would happen in your life. So if all those people you are trying to convince, you are trying to show uh, why they are wrong, why you're right, if all of them were already agreeing with you anyway, it is done, they agree with you, completely fine, they shake your hand, oh, thank you, uh, Johnny, uh, Timmy, or Tony, or whatever is your name, they say thank you, and they, they, they really provide you some legitimate testimonial of how powerful your words have been because you made them look uh, at things differently and now they understand. If that was happening, it happened, what is the main change from there that happens in your life? First of all, do you still talk to those people again? Maybe you don't even know, want to talk with them again. In that case, why the hell did you talk to them in the first place? And what else would be happening? Would you feel something different? If the answer is no, it wouldn't change anything, okay, then the problem was not about arguing, it was something else. And if the, the, the response is, oh, I would feel relieved. Great, relieved or uh, lo being loved or whatever, 
Great, now we have a direction in mind. You want actually to feel loved, to feel understood, to feel relieved. Then how could you start communicating toward that outcome more easily and more often from right now? Because if the end goal is to feel relieved around people, then how can you communicate yourself so that people feel relieved around you? Because if they feel relieved around you, you are going to feel relieved in turn as a consequence. But if you feel upset and angry around them, they will feel upset and angry with you. It's just a basic human nature, and I know it is pretty simplistic and dumb sometimes, but it is how it works. And last thing, if you have some trouble to let go of some assumptions you have, you want to show people why, why it is the truth, uh, you may consider this exercise. It is just giving the opposites, just to consider new options in your mind that you may have had trouble to access consciously so far. So the first part is you list all the reasons or all the possibilities or the ideas of what could be true if I was wrong. If I was wrong and I know you are right, you are perfect, nothing can be said about you, I know. Just for the sake of the exercise, if you could be wrong about the topic you are arguing about, then what could be true? What else would be true? What other things that I did not think about could be true, would be true, have to, must be true if I was wrong? And on the other side, to do some wordplay, what could be wrong if they were right? So, it may be confusing at first to consider those questions and enumerate all the things that it can make you think about, but the more you do that exercise, the easier it will be to access some other ways of communicating with those people that will actually either get rid of them or feel more assertive yourself when you communicate with them, and as a consequence, they will not even try to talk to you in a bad way because they sense you are not talking like a victim anymore. If people keep arguing with you, it is because somehow they see there is a potential victim inside you, or like a part of you is playing like a victim. Once you answer those questions, you will notice that that part of you can be healed, can be helped, so that you don't feel vulnerable anymore. And from there, you can discuss by being much, much more assertive and being respected for your points of views, even without having to argue, without having to insult anybody, just being more assertive in general. Now, if you want to learn more about communication skills and how you can develop your language abilities, you can download the seven steps to master sleight of mouth down below in the description, and it will teach you many ways you can turn a conversation around. Every time you feel stuck, every time you don't know how to communicate, you will have many simple language patterns you can use every time you need to discuss important matters with anybody around you.